Hey, welcome back to Doug Padger Radio. We have a s- final segment to our program where we, that we call The Right On, where there's people who do the right thing in the world, and by doing the right thing, that their strength and their faith and their hope and their love generates a greater level of that. You know, we have this sort of um, storyline in our world that says uh, that bad things are happening most all the time. Truth be told, there's people who are doing great things, and the great things that they're doing are really hearing and healing and creating difference in the world that we live in. So I give out a little right on to different people, and we've given them out to all kinds of folks for all kinds of important reasons. And this week, I decided that I'm going to give the right on out to two local restaurants in the Twin Cities. Here's why. Basically, because they go above and beyond the call. Because in the little restaurant business, right, it's tough business, hard to make a way, hard to make a living, tough to do, and it's really easy to cut corners. And I think when people go above and beyond, when people are really good, when people are really grooving with it, when people are doing the thing that they're supposed to do, that that spreads, that it's contagious, that just simply people doing the things that they ought to do, doing the good, right, next thing, that really does make a difference. So I just, my, my wife, Shelly, and I decided we were going to go out to eat after our garage sale on Friday, and Shelly had said, hey, there's this new restaurant called the Mill Valley Kitchen, Mill Valley Kitchen over on Excelsior Boulevard and France Avenue, just west of uh, Lake Calhoun, and it's newly opened there, and she'd heard good things about it, and it's kind of in that natural health foodie kind of world. Um, so I, I look up and call over to the, uh, the, the, the Mid Valley, and it says something about reservations. And we had, a, we had a fairly small window in which we could squeeze in dinner before we went to hear our very good friend Victoria do a fabulous little book. So we had, uh, we had just a, a short window. So I call over there at like 5.15, and I say to the people who, who answer the phone, hey, I understand that, uh, that you're looking that, you know, it's good to have reservations. Any chance we could get in like, I don't know, 6.15 or 6.30? And the woman says, oh, any chance you could come at 6? I'm like, well, I don't think we can get there by 6, and we kind of need to be out by 7.15. So, you know, if we could just squeeze, I'm being that guy, right? So the person on the phone said, well, I don't think there's any more reservations I can put out at 6.30. Well, okay, I'll make the reservation for you. Just come on in anyway. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Fantastic. I mean, who does that? You know, very often you kind of get this thing like, oh, sir, I'm sorry, these reservations have been, you, you can't call at 5.30, on a Friday and ask for reservations in the next 45 minutes to an hour. But she says, I'm going to go out of my way. So we go in. We have a terrific meal. The place was great. We loved it. And then what happens? On Saturday, my phone rings. I answer my phone. Hello? Hi, this is Mill Valley Kitchen. We just were checking back in with you to see if everything last night was to your satisfaction. How was your stay? Did you enjoy your time with us? I said, well, as a matter of fact, I've been thinking about it all day, had a great time. Thanks so much for the call. It was fantastic. Who does that? Who in the restaurant business makes an exception to squeeze you into the reservation set and then the next day keeps track of your phone number? Now, I know there's some people who are like, you know what, if a restaurant called me like the next day and was harassing me. I don't want them having my phone number. I don't want my phone ring. Well, I'm not like that. I'm totally fine with my phone ringing, especially when it's the people from the restaurant saying, we hope you enjoyed your time. That they didn't just see us as a transaction that was going to take place on Friday that, that, that paid for our meal and had something to do with their, with their cashing out on Friday night. They said, we think this is the start of something great. We think this is the start of a relationship. And we wanted to call and say, how was it for you? I mean, who does that? So I said out loud, right on. And then it clicked. They should get the right on tomorrow. So then on Saturday, we're down at, uh, at Lake Harriet. Lake Harriet has a little band shell. And in the band shell, they have a little snack bar that serves you food and kind of an upscale kind of food called the bread and pickle. The bread and pickle is like a snack bar. Well, my wife goes up and she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a water bottle. I didn't want to carry my big steel water bottle around the lake on the walk, but I just want something to do this hot. So, so we went up and, and she, she orders the $3 water bottle, which while we're standing in line, she and I had both noted, like, there's a drinking fountain right over there, but we don't have any containers. She wants to take it with us. So she says, I'm going to get the $3 water bottle. To which, uh, you know, we were like, ah, oh, should have gotten her own. You know, she just brought her own water. So that's a lot for a water bottle. So then she orders the three dollar, and they said, "Would you like the three dollar water bottle or the five dollar water bottle?" Well, come on, it's not our first time around the block. Three dollar water bottle, if you don't mind. And what do they hand her? A steel thermos, stainless steel thermos, 
BHP free with a carabiner on the end that's been sitting in, in icy cold water. So what does the bread and pickle give you when you order a water bottle? Not a plastic water bottle to fill the dumpsters and the landfills. A refillable steel water bottle. It's got to cost them three bucks to, to, to buy that. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe if you buy a, you know, 10,000 of them, it doesn't come to that. A $3 water bottle at a, at a, at a, a uh, you know, a snack bar. And what is it? Not a disposable. A stainless steel one with a classy little bread and pickle logo on it that then says, please use this water bottle and refill it in our water filter. We don't want to sell you any more water bottles. We don't think we should make money. And if you don't have a water bottle, what we want to sell you is not one that's going to fill up a landfill, but one that you can reuse is BHP free and stainless steel. I mean, what's going on with the food industry? All of a sudden, these people like doing the right thing, like treating customers well and calling them up and saying, let's have a relationship rather than a transaction. And then the people at the bread and pickle there at Lake Harriet, somebody deciding I, can, I can't imagine the meeting that went on with whomever owns the bread and pickle and said, you know what, we could sell water bottles for probably a buck seventy five or two bucks, the you know, ones you get, you know, the, the plastic ones, you know. People are going to be thirsty. They're going to be hot. I know we're going to sell those. And we could sell them not one. We could sell them five over the course of the summer. What do they decide instead? To sell you a finely chilled steel water bottle for three bucks. And I, I mean, we were we were stumbling around talking to strangers about it, literally talking to strangers in the parking lot about it, because that's what happens when people do the right thing. When someone does the thing that gets you the right on, it causes you to say, you know what, that's a rumor worth spreading. So whoever's doing that and whatever your business is, when you're doing the next right thing this week, just know that there's people who, if they knew about it, they would say, good for you, right on. May your faith bring faith. May your hope bring hope. And may your love bring love. And may your strength bring strength. So whoever's, I mean, if you can do it in the food industry, if you can do it in the cutthroat world of food, have a staff person that's going to follow up with someone who called and made a new reservation for the first time and say, you know what, we'd love to have you back. How did it go? Anything we could change? Or the people who say, we know you just wanted water. You didn't want to fill up, up a landfill. You didn't want to have to carry around plastic. You didn't want to have to pollute the planet anymore. So why don't we give you what you really wanted and we'll have just one interaction with you and then from there on out, you can go off and not fill up the landfills and make the world better. That's ah, fantastic. In a world that's full of people doing the shenanigans, it's good to see people doing those things. So to anyone who's doing the right thing in your work, in your world, in your business, in your family, right on from Doug Padger Radio. We don't have to just complain about the world the way it is. We have choices to make. We can make the world the way we need it to be, the way that it ought to be. In the words of Jesus, may the kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Sounds pretty good to me. And good for you, bread and pickle and Mill Valley Kitchen. Big Badger Radio will be back with you next week, and we'll see you in two weeks out there at the great Minnesota get-together at the Minnesota State Fair. Come see us over at the booth and say hello. Communion on a stick, you know, over there at the State Fair booth. All right, we'll talk to you next week and see you in a couple.